everyone, welcome to Southern Reads. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this really pretty teal burlap wreath. These are the supplies I used to make this wreath. I'm gonna start by painting this large letter. Uh, the great thing about this wreath is you can customize it any way you like it or any way your customer likes it. And you can customize not only the letter, but the paint color, um, the font. It was a little pricey, um, in my opinion, this particular letter, but um, I needed it a certain size and it all worked out. And I'm making sure I'm getting the insides and the back of the, the wood as well, just in case you could see from the sides. And I'm gonna start by gathering the burlap and then attaching it to the two outside rings. This is just, I believe it's five inch burlap. It's uh, from Walmart. And I did use almost all three rolls. And this is a 14 inch wire frame. To get started, I'm gonna push the burlap through the back and I'm gonna put it through each section in the wire frame. So I start on the inside, it doesn't really matter where you start, it's just easier for me to work towards myself than away. And I'm just pulling them through and once I'm happy with the size, then I'll move on to the next one. And you just do them in a line at first. I'm being sure to only pull from the roll. I'm not pulling from the existing one. And if you do a little bit, it's okay, you can just adjust it because you're not actually attaching these, you're just kind of pulling them through. And the first ones are the hardest. They're the ones that get everything started. And even at the end, they do look a little funny and you have to work with them a little bit because they're more um, like in line. But that's the best way to start because it gives you a, a good basis of how big your loops are gonna be going all the way around. All right, so after I'm happy with where they're at, I'm going to push them over and continue making them. Um, you can twist and pull up to start your next row. I don't do that. I feel like it wastes burlap. I just pull it up and pull it through the wire frame and just keep going. As long as you're pulling from the roll and not from the existing loop, you shouldn't have any issues. And if one loop is a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, it just kind of adds to the, the look of the wreath. So I did three sections in each one. So there's a total of nine loops or poofs. And then just to add to the next section, I just keep going. Like I just jump over the bar and I continue making my way around. Once you finish with the first roll, um, to add your second roll, you'll just attach them together and then attach them to the frame. I like to weave the zip tie through the burlap and then attach it to the frame. So you just kind of gather it and then you'll just push it through. And it'll go through one easily, but I couldn't get it to go through both. And you want to do it in just a little bit because if you do it on the edge, it might pull through. I believe this has like a, a hem on it, so it might not do it with this particular burlap, but some burlap is really loose. And the great thing is you can always tuck in any of the pieces sticking out and they all kind of go together. These are one of the wreaths that look really nice from behind. And then you'll just keep going like you've been doing. Once you're finished all of your loops, you're just going to attach the burlap to the frame, just like you've been doing. Gather it and feed it through and then attach it to the frame. Um, for me personally, Walmart has the best color options and they're really affordable. That's where I always buy my plain burlap that's hemmed. I believe it's five and a half inches though. This is only five inches. All right, and now I'll just trim it away and then I'll just tuck the leftover in. And you can see that's all I had left was this little piece. It's not really enough to do anything with. And then you'll go through and kind of fluff it the way you like it and put, you know, particular loops if you can see through or anything like that. You'll just spend some time doing that. 
Now I'm gonna make a bow. This is gonna be a super simple bow. I'm just gonna do one loop on each side that's larger and I'm doing six inch loops. The tail is probably about eight inches, but I trimmed that down. I just like to use my bow dabber. It makes my life easier. It's kind of like an extra hand. Um, I know lots of people ask about different bow makers. The reason I like this one is because it's so small. I can just stick it anywhere and I can pull it out easily. It's not something that I have to dig for or put together. I just had it sitting on my desk and I just grabbed it. So this second set of loops are probably five and a half inches. And then I'm just trim that away. I'm going to attach it with a zip tie and then I'll go through and make my center loop separate because I wanted it to be tight um, and not an actual loop. And before I finish um, tightening my zip tie, I need to add my pipe cleaner and that's what I'll use to attach it to the actual wreath. And then you'll tighten it and you do want to put it really tight once you're happy with the way the bow looks. And then to make the center, I'm just cutting off a, a pretty good sized piece bigger than what I actually need because you can always trim it down and then I'm going to fold it into threes. This reminds me of like a Christmas bow that you put on the greenery wreaths. So you could use this technique to make a bow like that. And then I'll just wrap it around and you could attach this several different ways. You could use a zip tie, you could use hot glue, um, you could use the pipe cleaner. I'm just going to tie a knot. And I'm going to use this to kind of pull it through and make sure it's tight. All right, and now I'm going to dovetail the ends. And I just fold that in half and cut from the crease out to the, um, no, I'm sorry, I had messed up. You cut from the wire part to the crease. I make a lot of bows and I dovetail a ton of ribbon and I still sometimes mess that up. And you do want the tails to be the same. It was nice it had the chevron pattern so I could line it up pretty good. And it's fun with this, you know, the plain burlap. You can always have fun with your ribbons. So to attach the actual letter, I used some cardboard because this wood was a little bit thin, some pipe cleaners and a staple gun. And I just stapled it to the back. You, you know, you want to make sure you put some kind of cushion there if your wood's not super thick so it won't stick all the way through. And then I just wrap it around the actual frame. And I do the same thing with the bow. Once I decide where I want the bow to be, I feed it through the burlap. And you can go in between or actually through the burlap. It's up to you. And then attach it to the frame. With this one, I kind of had to play around with it a little while. I had to move the D down and move the bow up. Um, until me and the customer were happy. And then this, I'm just showing you how I make sure the pipe cleaners are tucked away in the back. And this is so you don't scratch anyone's door. And you just wrap it around and make sure the wire part's sticking into the wreath. But that's it, that's how I made my burlap wreath. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can always email me at craftingwithlee at yahoo.com. Thanks so much for watching, and if you learned anything or liked my video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.